this is first reading group uh, for this new academic year. Uh, the idea is uh, on a regular basis, we try to do that every three weeks uh, to have somebody present some work who, who uh, yes, find to be interesting to be shared around the, uh, as a team. And uh, we've coupled that with uh, the energy of ESOS. And uh, so it's going to be also the first seminar of ESOS presenting uh, research work in the thematic of a sustainable computer system. And for the first seminar, uh, Thibaut Marty is going to present. So thank you. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to present a paper that I didn't work, uh, I didn't write, uh, which is named Kaya for Computer Architects. Uh, towards sustainable com computer system. Uh, so I'd like to start uh, with why did I choose this paper? Because it explains fundamental concepts for our topics, which uh, is sustainable electronics, and it points what to do and especially what not to do in this uh, domain to have an impact. Uh, it also draws an interesting conclusion about, uh, about this topic. And it's a well written paper, so if uh, the topic is interesting for you, uh, you, you can read it. Uh, it's a good exercise. So, a quick reminder before I actually start uh, what is Kaya Identity? So, it was coined by a Japanese economist, uh, and the goal is to reason about CO2 emissions. So, we just uh, put an equation which is basically CO2 equals CO2, and we add the um, we add factors that are uh, eliminated to reason about CO2. CO2. Right. Uh, so F here is the global CO2 emissions uh, worldwide. Uh, G is the population. G is the GDP. So it's, in French, it's uh, PIB. Uh, e is global energy consumption uh, worldwide. Uh, those are the factors, and we can also reason about uh, ratios. So, GRP is uh, GDP per capita, uh, so the, the mean. Uh, e over G is energy intensity per unit of GDP, so how uh, how many units of energy you need to make one part of GDP. And F over E is the carbon intensity per unit of energy. So either you, you burn coal or you use wine to uh, make economic work. Uh, and so one example of use of this um, uh, this identity is how to how to reduce CO2 emissions. So you you, you want, for example, to uh, to to go to green on the, the the power plants, so it's this factor that you will uh, decrease, but maybe uh, this uh, this solution will increase other factors, so maybe we, you, you'll not actually decrease CO2 emissions, so you need to think globally, but it helps to pinpoint where you want to have any action on CO2. So the key idea of, the key ideas of this paper is to reformulate uh, the key identity to specific reason uh, about computer uh, architecture, so uh, chip design, uh, computer design, uh, electronics, uh, for the impact of CO2. And more especially, uh, more importantly, uh, what we can do uh, as computer architects to reduce the environmental impacts of computing uh, based on the identity, how we can think about uh, what we can do. So the outline of my presentation, uh, I will start with a bit of motivation and context, and then I will explain the three entities that we, you can find in the paper for, uh, for us. Uh, we, we then analyze uh, the current trends, so where we are going with uh, the, the current use of energy, the current power plant, et cetera, and what we can do to try to do better than the current trends. And then we'll uh, conclude. So first, motivation and background. So why anyone, why, why anyone should uh, care? Uh, so today, information and communication technology, so ICT, is between two and four percent of uh, the global greenhouse gases emissions. Uh, so it's not that much, but it's still four percent. It's huge, and it's and it's growing at a rapid pace. So uh, both in percentage and in absolute value. Uh, and the United Nations said uh, a few months ago that we need to cut global emission by 6.6% each year to meet Paris agreements. And the goal is to limit the global one to 1.5% uh, uh, 1 degrees. Uh, so 
this is not going to the right direction and we want to uh, change that. Uh, and we need uh, in our topic to ask ourselves what we can do to design sustainable computer, uh, computer systems because it's in a uh, worldwide uh, team, so we need to figure out what is in our power. Uh, we, to do that, we will uh, first split and think about what are the, the sources of emissions uh, of uh, computer design um, or cheap, uh, cheap uh, manufacturing. Uh, first, we split emissions in two uh, categories. Unbundled emissions, which are uh, the emissions uh, at the fabrication uh, phase, uh, so the energy used and the, the gases uh, emissions, and two operational, uh, which are the emissions um, during the usage on, of the, the chip, uh, like the, ener the energy we are using right now to make the presentation. For the first part, we'll, uh, we will split it into scopes, uh, respecting the GRG protocol. So there is three scopes. The first one is chemicals and gases uh, emitted during uh, the, the fabrication, uh, <coughs> which has a, a big impact in, uh, in the chip fabric. Scope two is energy consumption during manufac manufacturing. So it's the energy you use to uh, uh, in your uh, fabrication uh, plants, your fabrication uh, you see, uh, but you're not producing the energy. And scope three is the uh, indirect GRG emission, uh, but it's not under our, uh, our control, so we skip that. So what what are the three Kaya like Kaya like entities for computer architects? Uh, there is three of, of them because there is one for operational emissions and one per scope for unbundled emissions. Okay. So the, the first we uh, see is for modalized scope two. So scope two is uh, is the energy consumption during manufacturing. Uh, so it's the same principle. You get F equal F, and you add the factors you want to think about it. So what are those factors? It's the number of produced uh, produced uh, chips. How many do you read per year? Uh, the number of wafer produced per chip. So wafer is a uh, slice of selection when you put chips uh, on it. Yeah, you put it on it. And the energy needed to produce a wafer in the, the fab. And the car car carbon intensity of energy used during manufacturing. So those are the, the, the factors. Uh, and the current trend of those factors is that the number of chips is uh, increasing by 11% per year. So it's exponential. Uh, it's an estimation for 22, uh, 2020 and 2025. Uh, today we are uh, around nine, so it's going. Uh, the number of wet per uh, chip is increasing if uh, because we are building uh, bigger and bigger dies, so there is less die by pay, pay, pay per wafer. And uh, the energy per uh, needed per wafer is increasing because of the new technology nodes we are. We, we are doing uh, uh, spoilers from our transistors, and this is using more bond energy to read the, the chips. And it's uh, around 12% per year, so it's uh, huge. And finally, uh, the, CO2, the carbon intensity of the energy depends on the energy source. If you are in Europe, you're, uh, you are in the lucky part of the world, and it's decreasing, so it's less and less carbon intensive, about uh, 2.5% in year. If you are in China, uh, it's not the same story. So the conclusion for this first part is that uh, the response toward green energy uh, does not compensate for growing demand for chips. So even if in Europe we are lucky and we are going to less, less carbon intensive energy, uh, it's not sufficient at all because we are we, we are the money for a lot of chips and more and more chips. Uh, so what are the solutions? The first one is to produce less chips. Uh, so we, I, I don't know if we, have, we, we can have any impact on that. <laughs> it's more practical. Uh, the second one is to shift to our low carbon energy suits and uh, chapter. And the third one, the third one is to design smaller chips. So in the wafer with the same amount of energy, you just need uh, more chips. We go for the, the second one, the second energy. On scope one. So those are the gas uh, emitted at the fabrication. Uh, 
uh, this time the factor are still the number of chips, uh, the number of chips, uh, the number of wafer per chips, and the new one, the carbon dioxide equivalents uh, of what we are emitting during fabrication. So in electronics, we are emitting uh, fluorinated gases, which have a huge, huge impact on the global warming, like the FS6 uh, gas is equivalent to uh, 25,000 of uh, CO2 microbes, microbes or kilograms. Uh, the current trend is that this, this new factor in this uh, scope is increasing also uh, by 9.3%. Uh, uh, and this is due to the, um, uh, the technology node, which is more and more complicated. complicated. The reason for this part is that uh, scope one is also increasing by almost 20% 20, 20, 20 per year. Uh, for the same reason, demand for chips and increasing use of chemicals uh, for uh, for fabrications. The solutions are almost the same. It's almost less chips, simple, but hard to do. And uh, design smaller chips for the same reason. Uh, the last one is about operational animation. So the Kaya identity, uh, we still have the number of chips, uh, the carbon intensity of energy, because this time it's when you plug your laptop in your, plug, uh, your, your wall plug, uh, you use energy. And if you are in France or in China or otherwise, it's not the same factor. And the total energy usage over the lifetime of a chip um, which uh, is, uh, um, yeah, so it's how many kilowatts you use uh, to power your chip over its uh, full uh, lifetime. It's full lifetime, sorry. Uh, so this, that factor, which is uh, new, is proportional to idle power. Uh, if there is no work to, to do and you assume that your chip is uh, off or, or uh, sleeping, uh, there is all, uh, the idle power, so you want to optimize that. Uh, and it's proportional to the amount of energy to get the work done, uh, if there is work to do. And it's the amount of energy, not the amount of power, which is not the same thing. And the current trends is that uh, the last factor is uh, going down. And that's because of all the energy efficiency work that uh, we are doing for the last decade. Uh, so this means that you, you can do more and more computation on your chip with the same power. So that, that, that's good. Uh, and the two factors are decreasing. This is uh, carbon intensity. It's going to uh, And that could compensate for uh, the number of chips, uh, which is uh, going down. Good. So now we are going to analyze the current trend of uh, this um, this identity uh, with the current uh, the current percentage of increasing or decreasing per year to see where we are going. Uh, so we specifically um, look at two scenarios because it's hard to draw conclusion uh, because it's not the same if you take in a good uh, IoT device, a smartphone, a server, red uh, computer, etc. So there is two scenarios. The first one is battery powered device. Uh, in this case, the initial emissions there is a um, 80% uh, of the emissions which are produced at the fabrication phase and only 20% at the operational phase. And for an air risk limited device like, uh, uh, like uh, a desk uh, desktop, uh, it's the opposite. Um, those are the initial conditions. Not, we, we, we see what, uh, where, where this is going. And we assume that uh, we we have a constant die size over the 10 years uh, where uh, we where, when we do the, the projection. Uh, and the energy per uh, chip, so this is the energy efficiency is decreasing because of all the work on this topic. And uh, the, look, the, the power plants are uh, more and more uh, low carbon. But we still. Um, we, we, we still consider that the number of ships and all the other factors that we discussed is growing uh, because of the technology not on everything. So this is total the two figures for battery power on always connected uh, device. And we can see that it's uh, going up uh, uh, firstly. Oops, sorry. And uh, that's for the detail when we are starting with only 20% of mobile emission. Uh, the embodied emissions are 
le most, uh, the most important parts after 10 years. The total emission which um, uh, 4.7 and 1.65 uh, times over these two years, over 10 years for these two, um, uh, these two, uh, these two scenarios. And uh, we are, uh, the embedded emissions are more important. So one of the, the more important thing to, to look at. And the reason is the increasing demand per ships. Uh, so embedded emissions are more important. And the wafer energy density, which is uh, going up. So now that we have, now that uh, we, we look what we, where we are going, what can we do to change that? So the first idea is to just uh, reduce the dominant factor. So for the battery powered scenario is to reduce the chip area uh, by 10% per year. And for the always connected scenario is to reduce the lifetime energy per 20% per year. Uh, so uh, uh, in the previous slide, this was zero per year, and this was minus 10 per year. So we are at 10. Uh, so lifetime energy is like being more efficient uh, for the same amount of time of use time. Uh, those are the two figures for the two scenarios. So it's big layer, but we are still uh, seeing that it's going up, maybe a bit less, but see. And that's why it's interesting because uh, it's going down and then it's going up. And we still see that the embedded emission, the, the, the orange part, uh, is, is, is still the, the, the major contribution after 10 years. And it's always the same reason it's increasing the number of ships on the wafer energy intensity which uh, are the, the reason behind uh, the trends. So it doesn't work. Uh, if we, you just add, uh, you, you just reduce the major uh, impact for both scenarios, it doesn't work. So we look at reducing both factors. Uh, so we look at the impact of the aviation uh, of both the cheap area and the die size for both scenarios. For the first scenario, the battery point scenario, uh, this is a figure, it's a bit complicated to read, so I help you. Um, here you are, you have the CLGR, CLGR is a person per year uh, equation for the die size. So here you are increasing the die size, and here you are decreasing the die size. And the color are, are the, the emission of the lifetime energy consumption for the operational phase. Uh, so here it's um, more energy uh, density, and here uh, in the dark it's less energy density. And the result is on the left. It's a total emission of the cheap lifetime, including uh, fabrication and uh, usage. So what is important is that uh, you want to go under Z0 because you want to reduce the total emission of the cheap lifetime. And what you can uh, see is that to go under Z0, you want to uh, be only in this part of the scope of the other core because here is above zero. So if you're with the die size emission, it's less than 10% per year. The first conclusion to draw is that if you want to reduce total uh, emission of, uh, of cheap production, you want to reduce the life size. Uh, it's it's a only solution according to this model. Uh, oops, there is a one line this. So the life size inventory and the, the lifetime energy consumption helps because uh, this line is bigger than this one. It's, uh, it, uh, the total emission is uh, lower. But it's not efficient. See, if, if you stay at zero, uh, this is better than this, but it's still going up. So uh, energy efficiency during operational uh, phase, it's not sufficient. We then looked for the second scenario, the always community scenario. So it's the same figure with the, the different parameters. And it's almost the same uh, conclusion. You still want to be under zero for the total emission. And for that, you want to be on the left part uh, here, and the die size still uh, need to decrease a bit. But in this case, uh, the energy, the energy, the lifetime energy usage for the operational uh, phase is uh, it, it's voluntary too to decrease because uh, if you stay at zero, which is this time, uh, even if in, in the best case scenario for that time, you still are over zero. So you see. Uh, Doing more emission year over time. So the, uh, you, you need to reduce both factors. Uh, to conclude this presentation, the key question, uh, firstly, the key question that we, we, we ask ourselves 
Uh, it's according to these numbers that we, uh, we, we don't have uh, actually a, a power over them, the number of chips, uh, the energy demand for new technology nodes, so the, the, the new processor with this uh, taxa, and the transition toward load carbon energy source, which is variable uh, where, uh, according to where you are in the, the world. The question is, within the context, can we design chip in a more sustainable way with what we know, what we can do? And the answer is yes. And how we can do that? Firstly, is to reduce the number of, uh, of chips uh, we, we need in our society or more. Um, there is a, a few insights in the paper, but it's a bit broad. So the first idea is to have more functionality per chip. Uh, like heterogeneous stuff when you have a CPU, GPU, uh, um, uh, specialized accelerator, etc. In a bit, you can use it for more um, for to, to to do more uh, computation. So it can be interesting. Of course, it's a trade-off be between embedded emission and operational emission because you have a bigger chip, but maybe uh, you reduce the number of chip. It can be interesting. You can use uh, fluctuant techniques to extend the lifetime of the chip. Uh, if you are in a, in a multi core system and one of the core is dying, maybe you can just uh, uh, shut it uh, off and still use the, the remaining part of the chip. So you extend the, the lifetime, and the goal is to reduce the embodied emission of the, the total uh, fabrication of the chips. <laughs> you can also change business model. Uh, so I'm not Saying that you you should not be capitalist, but maybe the cheaper uh, the, the cheap manufacturers could uh, make money with something else that's uh, buying uh, that's uh, sorry um, producing and selling chips uh, with maybe repercussions, uh, refurbishing, usage, etc. etc. The second solution is to design smaller chips uh, that can be. Like difficult to to help because you want to have more and more functionality in your chips for your smartphone, for your TV, for whatever, for your, your trains, for your planes. Uh, but actually, because of the more of Moore's law or other uh, improvements in the in, in technology, you can actually integrate more functionality in your chip with less to stuff or actually less uh, smaller chips. Uh, so yeah, number on that. Uh, so Morla, Morlo is uh, or was, I'm not sure. Uh, it's uh, forty-one percent increasing transistor for the same uh, surface. It's a lot, and what we we did is that you, we we hit the Jamas paradox. So instead of doing smaller chips, we do we, we did bigger chips and just add more and more transistors and more and more. Functionalities, and you can do a trade-off. You can use uh, fewer new transistors uh, and still have new functionalities. So in this case, you can reduce the die size and uh, so be more sustainable. But you can add new functionalities. You just add less new functionalities, but that can be good uh, uh, a good trade-off. And the third uh, solution is to improve energy and power efficiency. So I said that. That was not enough, but it's still uh, needed to. We, we still need to do it uh, to um, to improve both the idle and the, uh, the working time of our chips. Uh, so I let this slide, which are the key, the three key takeaways of this uh, presentation, and I um, I am waiting for you for your questions if you have anyone. Any um, question? Thank you. The first one, uh, you were saying that by uh, with the new nodes, they tend to consume more energy. Uh, what we've seen very recently is uh, fabrication, where there is an interesting clue in the type of nodes which are used, uh, where, for example, peripheral of a sock are uh, produced on uh, older technology. Uh, could that also help in some way? Uh, yes, of course, because. Oops. Um, because if you look at the Kayalak identity for uh, this one here, here. Um, 
about this one. Yeah. So you are talking about uh, this factor, uh, which is going up. <coughs> um, I did not look at the detail for this number, but there, there, there are sources in the paper. Uh, so I don't know if, if it's, um, I think it's a mean for all the, the all the manufacturers, uh, but I think it's more than 20 percent if you go to the new technology, and it's uh, zero if you you stay on the old technology. So I guess it's a mean. And if you are doing parts of the chip or part of your uh, of, of your um, device with other technology, you're just uh, reducing this factor, so it helps. Uh, but uh, I think it's impossible to go under zero. Uh, Except if you use very old technology for all uh, or from, for a major part of uh, what we are reading. So it's uh, helping on that. Why the KN entity are a useful tool is that you, you take the factors and you say, okay, I have an idea, I want to work on that factor, and I want to, to uh, it to, to go down. You need to still think about which, which will be the impact of the other factors. That's the main limitation of the KN entity in that city from this one. Uh, is that it, they are not uh, independent. You really need to think about the whole picture. Uh, so it can help, uh, but I, I don't have the any more. Well, maybe a question on, on the technology. So it, the, here the models are very general, but they cover, I mean, we, we fabricate both transistors at a few nanometers and uh, at uh, hundreds of nanometers, depending on the products. Uh, do these are these parameters an average over all systems, or do you, do you have some information on how they are computed? Mm. Uh, that's a good question, and I'm, I'm I'm not sure. Um, <coughs> so I, I'm guessing it's an average based on uh, on the survey of uh, all all of what we are producing right now for new and old technologies. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Look at it. Yes. Um, Kaya is one methodology to uh, model the carbon impact of uh, electronics. Uh, do you know any other methodology to lead to the same conclusion? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. And actually, in the paper, they are not really discussing what it works for uh, this kind of approach. There are other artworks, uh, but it's basically the same idea uh, for another paper. Um, but I'm not sure because, like we said, it's really um, global figures about the global uh, chip fabrication worldwide uh, and how we can uh, reason about that. Uh, if you look at the local scale, uh, maybe you cannot draw a conclusion on, or you cannot um, have any action of those uh, local scale. But uh, it's a good question. We can think about uh, what model we can use and uh, what is uh, available in the, in the literature. The goal of the paper is to be to reduce the uh, carbon emission uh, barrier, right? To reduce the percentage of uh, uh, related to other years. Yes. Uh, yes, it's uh, the percentage uh, below zero. Yes, because that was the goal for the United Nation and for the world, is to decrease the emissions. Okay. Uh, uh, is is just under zero? Uh, the goal, or is it even lower? Well, the, the actual goal is, um, yeah, it's minus 7.6% per year, globally. So actually, uh, it depends on what we can do on the projects. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's the same as well, is that you, you need to look at uh, the global scale. Uh, so here we are focusing on electronics, there are everything else. Uh, so the goal is 7.6% per year. Uh, so we just staying as zero is not sufficient uh, because of carbon neutral objectives. Uh, it's, it 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 would be actually pretty good and uh, pretty hard to achieve, I think. Uh, but it's in paper of course that it's uh, achievable if you if we take the right decisions. Um, if you stay at zero, you need to compensate that on other um, other sources sources of emissions. 
And if you look at the, the final uh, figure, it's pretty good. Uh, this one. Uh, you see that if you, I mean, going 10% or 10% for decades, it's actually pretty hard. So you say, yeah, well, let's go here. Okay, that's a good idea, but how we can do that? Uh, it's pretty hard, not here. The 10% is actually not enough. So you, you need to really, um, we need a huge, huge efforts um, to go forward um, to, to reduce this factor. Uh, and the, the, the lower the is the lower the bigger. So the minus 7.6% would be, yeah, it's quite key. The, yeah, it, uh, it's here, yeah. So, so is this line? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but uh, I, I mean, in the paper they say that, and I'm actually quite, um, I, I agree, is that, uh, reducing that time energy is maybe a bit simpler that's what it seems like that uh, because of all the work that we do on energy efficiency uh, but you need to take care of general paradox of course um, and so it's not sufficient but it's uh, easy but it's not sufficient so here if you go like minus 10% or minus 20% it's actually pretty good uh, when, uh, if you compare to zero uh, line yeah. Um, it's pretty, it's obviously much better to be here than to be here. Um, to be here, to be here. So, yeah. Are there some questions online? Uh, uh, yes, I have a question, please. Okay, hey, go ahead, Pete. Hi, sorry, I didn't have time to join a, a building 10. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, can, can you uh, can you come back to your uh, first or second slide? I don't remember what well, not maybe. Yes, uh, but, but no, 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 sorry, again. Again, no, no, yes, stop, yes, yes, okay, okay. yes, it's about the okay, and by the emissions on the scope. So, scope one, you have the emissions. The, so the emission gas related to chemical, yes, to the chemicals and gases emitted. Uh, but for, for the process of the of the building electronics, right? Uh, yes, it's a it's a chemicals and gases that you emit in the, the factory. During what? Sorry. Uh, in the factory. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Direct emissions. Mm. Yes. And in scope two, energy consumption during manufacturing. Okay, so uh, these two scopes, I think, are, uh, have clearly non-null intersection. Uh, uh, it, it, it should have null intersections if you have a yes. totally decarbonated uh, electricity production. For instance, uh, let's assume that in France it is the case. Okay. okay. Yes. But it's not. It's not. It's, it's not. Uh, you you can you can retrieve emission in both scope here. No. Uh, well, actually, I, I was a bit quick on the scopes, right? Uh, and the scope two is missing a word. It's uh, emission uh, caused by the energy that is producing produced by the power plants that you are using. So if you're in France and you're using uh, nuclear power, it, yes. which is uh, equivalent to 11 gram per uh, kilometer, 11, yeah. 11 gram of CO2 per kilometer, uh, and you use uh, one kilometer, uh, this is 12 gram. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and of course, it's uh, producing also chemicals on gases and uh, using water on, on raw materials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But all of this is reduced at uh, gram per kilometer of uh, usage, while scope one is the chemicals and gases that you are actually producing uh, from your own factory. So like the FS6 gas that you are using for uh, for, for to build the water uh, is appointed here. So there is a new intersection uh, between the two. And okay. And you can sum up uh, then and you, you, go, you, you get your, uh, your, your the full emissions. Ah, okay, okay. So. Okay, so the, the gases emitted uh, in scope one are not uh, the 
I mean, uh, uh, carbon dioxide, for instance. Yes, uh, well, well, it can be, but it's not uh, the gases that are already accounted for the energy, the electricity that you are using. I'm not sure yeah. if it's only mm -hmm. it's COP2. Yeah, this is COP2. So okay. it's like yeah, so, so it's very important how to count the the things in which category, actually. Yes. Yes. OK. Um, OK, thank you. Any other question? All right. Any other question online? If not, uh, let's thank Thibault again. Uh, we will return in, uh, say, we do, uh, for the reading group. We try to have a reading group every three weeks. Uh, so if somebody has an idea for an interesting paper that he wants to present because he thinks uh, that can be somehow interesting for the rest of the team, uh, please uh, announce yourself uh, now or later. And uh, we will also continue uh, feeding the reading group with uh, the um, uh, similar from uh, ASOS, which are also presenting uh, other works like that. So, uh, Noah will uh, share the information as it's come uh, through the usual uh, mailing list and uh, to everybody at the chair for the as a seminar and for the team uh, for our classic uh, training group. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.